Hi guys, it's Miss Sam, and we're gonna continue with our review on our division strategies and methods. The last video was all about the lucky seven method. Now today we're gonna go into the box method, which some of us in the class really liked. So it's important that we go over these two methods. So on your sheet of paper, go ahead and write this problem, 83 divided by six. And as you can see, I kind of made myself a long rectangle. You're gonna kinda of wanna do that too. And I'm gonna split it in half. The reason why I'm gonna split it in half is because I'm going to expand out the number 83. And remember, I'm gonna put 80 at the top and I'm gonna put three kind of below. Cause that's gonna come in handy for us. I'm actually gonna move it down a little bit more. I'm gonna, cause it's gonna be coming handy with us. This is another way how to do our division. And I'm gonna put six on the outside. Now, the first thing first, we have to see how many times can six go into 80 without going over? Or think about it, if I cover up the zero, how many times can six go into eight? Well, six can go into eight one time, but because I'm in the tens place value, I'm gonna stick on that additional zero. So six can go into 80 10 times. And I'm gonna put this 10 up here because what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna kind of be multiplying out. So six times 10 is 60. I'm gonna put the 60 below the 80. And I'm gonna subtract those two numbers together. When I subtract 80 from 60, I'm gonna get 20. The next step I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this 20 and I'm gonna box it and I'm gonna transfer it and I'm gonna move him all the way above the three. That's why you kind of give a little space. Why I'm doing that is because if we did this in our lucky seven, we would have to bring down the three. We would have the two, we'd bring down the three and say, well, how many times can six go into 23 altogether? In the box method, we are bringing, bringing this 20 over to the three, and that's essentially how we're gonna get that 23. It's just a little extra step. So I'm gonna add 20 and three, which I already said was 23. Now I have to ask myself, how many times can six go into 23 without going over? Well, six can go into 23 without going over three times. I'm gonna put that three up there and I'm gonna multiply six times three, which is 18. Then I'm gonna subtract. I'm gonna subtract 23, um, 18 from 23. And I'm gonna solve our, my normal math. I'm gonna borrow, I'm gonna get all my problems. Now I have this little remainder. Now remember what I said about remainder smaller than the divisor, if it's, if it's the number smaller than the divisor, you have the remainder. But now you're saying, Miss Sam, what do I do next? There's nothing else for me to do. Wrong. You're gonna add 10 plus three, which is 13, and you're gonna bring this little remainder up and he's gonna join the party as a remainder of five. So 83 divided by six is 13 with a remainder of five. All right, we're gonna keep practicing some more problems, so stick with me. I know it's a little different. I know some of us are really excited for this because you guys loved it in the classroom. Some of us did, some of us didn't. Okay, I'm just reviewing our method, so that way you can be able to know how to solve and you pick the one that best feels comfortable to you unless they ask you to use a certain method. That's a hint, hint for tomorrow's activity. So the next problem I have is 479, divide that by two. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make my box. Now, just like the area model, you make as many parts as there are place values. So this is 400, so I know hundreds, there's gonna be three place values. My box is gonna be having three separate parts. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna write down my numbers. I'm gonna expand them out. 
Always put that highest number, whatever number it is, start off, put it up at the top. The following numbers, kind of put it in the middle. I'm gonna put two off to the side. Now I'm gonna ask myself, how many times can two go into 400 without going over? If I can't do that in my head, well think, how many times can two go into four without going over? Well, two can go into four two times, and I'm gonna tack on those two additional zeros. So two times 200, is 400, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna subtract. 400 minus 400 is zero. I can't stop there because you see I have the additional numbers. I can't stop there because, well, Miss M, I got a zero. It's, I'm done. No, you're not done. You're gonna take this zero, and you're gonna carry him and add him, and we're gonna add him to 70. So 70 plus zero is still gonna be 70. Now my job is to say how many times can two go into 70 or how many times can two go into seven without going over? Well, two can go into 70 three, well, 30 times. It would be three if I said two can go into seven 30 times, but it's 30 because it's in the tens place value. So two times 30 is 60 and I'm gonna subtract 60 from 70 and I'm gonna get 10. But I'm not done yet, so I'm gonna take this 10 and I'm gonna drag him and I'm gonna add him to the nine and I'm gonna get 19. Now my job is to say how many times can two go into 19 without going over? This is where you need to know your facts. Two can go into 19 without going over nine times because nine times two is 18 and I'm gonna subtract 18 from 19 and I'm gonna get a remainder of one. Now I gotta make sure that I am going to add the numbers at the top. I'm gonna box this little one here so I don't remember, so I remember him. So I'm gonna get 239 with a remainder of one. So 479 divided by two will give me a quotient of 239 with a remainder of one. Now we did in the classroom, we made little boxes to represent the little remainder. You can still do that or you can still write out R1, which either way will work. All right, now we're moving on to problems in the thousands. <clears throat> so we have 6,250 divided by five. I'm gonna go ahead and make my box. I'm gonna make it pretty long because I have a lot of new numbers to add. I'm gonna divide this big box into four parts because thousands place has four numbers in it. So I'm gonna make sure I make the correct numbers, number of spaces. I'm gonna put down and expand out each digit that's in 6,250. All right, now the first step. How many times can five, you need to cover, cover. How many times can five go into 6,000? Well, I know off the top of my head, five can go into 6,000 only 1,000 times. So I'm gonna subtract 5,000 from 6,000 and I'm gonna get 1,000 left over. I'm gonna take this 1,000 and I'm gonna add him to the 200 I have and I'm gonna get 1,200 or 1,200. And now my job is to say how many times can 5,000, um, five, not 5,000, how many times can five go into 1,200 or 1,200? Cover the zeros if you need to. Say how many times can five go into 12? Well, five can only go into 12 two times. And tack on those zeros, which will be 200, and multiply, which is gonna give me another 1,000. And I'm gonna subtract and I'm gonna get 200 here. Now I'm gonna take this 200 and I'm gonna add him and bring him around and I'm gonna add him to the 50 and I'm gonna get 250. Now I'm gonna ask myself how many times can five go into 250? And it can go into 250 50 times. And I'm gonna multiply to 50 times five, which is gonna get me 250. And I'm gonna get a zero. 
I'm not done. I know it seems like I'm going to be done. And I know you, a lot of you are going to want to stop here because Miss M, zero plus zero is zero. There's no need to go. Yes, I understand, but you need to finish. You cannot just leave a number alone. You must bring it down. You must add and subtract it until you can't anymore. So we're going to take this zero and we're going to add him to the zero right here. And now I'm done because you cannot leave an empty space. You can't leave a number untouched, undone. Until you do all that, you must keep bringing it around. So now I'm going to add my numbers here. And 6,250 divided by 5 is going to give me a quotient of 1,250. All right, we're going to do one more, just one more for today's review for on this lesson. All right, the last problem, 6,218 divided by 4. I'm going to make my box. I'm going to split them into four equal parts. Well, not have to be equal, but enough for us to be able to write in. I'm going to write down my numbers. I'm expanding out. All right, now the fun can begin. <laughs> Cover the zeros if you need to. Otherwise, do what? How many times can four go into six thousand without going over? Four can go into six thousand without going over a thousand times. I'm gonna multiply a thousand by four, and I'm gonna get four thousand, which I'm gonna subtract from six thousand, and I'm gonna get two thousand left over. I'm gonna take this two thousand, bring him up, and add him to the two hundred. And I'm going to get 2,200 or 2,200. I'm going to cover the zeros if needed or ask myself how many times can 4 go into 2,200 or 22. And the answer is 500. It's 500 times 4 is going to give me 2,000. And I'm going to subtract 2,200 from 2,000. And I'm going to get 200. Then I'm gonna take this 200 and you guessed it, I'm gonna add him to the 10 and get 210. And I gotta ask myself, well, how many times can four go into 210? Four can go into 210 50 times because 50 times four is 200. And I'm gonna subtract and I'm gonna get this 10 left over and I'm gonna bring the 10 and I'm gonna add him to the eight. 10 plus 8 is 18. I'm going to ask myself how many times can 4 go into 18. 4 can go into 18 uh, <coughs> 4 times because 4 times 4 is 16. 18 minus 16 is 2, and I'm going to box that. Now I'm going to add everybody up here. So 6,218 divided by 4 will give me a quotient of 1,500. 54 with a remainder of two. And I can go ahead and I can make the two little boxes here to show that. All right, guys. So when we are doing box method, you are basically multiplying, then subtracting, and then adding, just like we do normally with our lucky seven method. All right, watch these videos, pay attention, because this is gonna come in handy for tomorrow's graded lesson. Until the next video, bye guys.